In this video, we're going to be working with confidence intervals. We're going to be using our CAS, the TI Inspire is the one I'll show you how to use to determine confidence intervals. We'll be finding confidence intervals by hand. You need to be able to do that as well. We'll be working out sample proportions if they give us a confidence interval. How do you work out the sample proportion? And we'll be working out how we go about finding the sample size that we need if we have a particular level of confidence that we're after. So let's have a look with the CAS. So to work with a confidence interval on TI Inspire, you actually need to use the statistics menu. So it's not in the probability section, it's in the statistics menu. And under the statistics menu, you'll find confidence intervals. And the one that we want to use is we want to use the one prop Z interval. So we're working with one proportion, one sample proportion, and we're using Z values to create that confidence interval. So this is the one that you need to make sure that you're using. And as you can see, there are all other different sorts of confidence intervals. So let's have a look at a question. So a random sample of 80 people, a random sample of 80 people were surveyed about increasing the minimum age to obtain a driver's license to 20. Only 10% only only of the sample agreed with the proposal. So what they want us to do is to determine the 95% confidence interval. So we want a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of people in the population who agree with the proposal. So let's have a look at what you get on your CAS calculator when you use the statistics menu to find your confidence intervals and the one prop Z interval section. So let's have a look at what we get there. Let's move this up. Okay, so when you go to the one prop Z interval section on your CAS calculator, it asks for the number of successes. So we've got here in our question that only 10% of the sample agreed. So this is our successes and so we need to convert from 10% of 80 so 10% of the sample and our sample size we need to put in as well and then finally we need to put our confidence interval value our confidence level is our percentage confidence interval. So we're after 95%, but we have to put it in as a decimal. Okay, so the things to watch out for is this top one here needs to be the number of successes, not the proportion of successes. And then when you press OK on that, this is what pops up and it gives you quite a bit of information here. So what we're after for a confidence interval is two numbers that fit on either end of the confidence interval. This first one here is our confidence interval lower number and this second one is our confidence interval upper number. So they're the two numbers that go in there. So if we put those in 0 0.03 and 0 0.16, we'll put those there. It also gives us our p hat value for our sample. So if you like, if we had our proportion down here, it gives us our p hat value. It tells us what the margin of error is, so that's that length there. It's the same on either side. 
that goes out to our two end numbers. So this is CL if you like and this is CU. And it also reiterates to us the information that we put in that the number in our sample was 80. So that's how you read the information that pops up from your CAS calculator. So the next sort of question we want to look at is one where we need to solve for a confidence interval, find the 90% confidence interval, and we need to do it by hand. So let's have a look at what the question has to say. So it says, for a suspected bias coin that has been flipped 18 times. So there is our sample size already. N is equal to 18. And six of the trials have been, and six tails have been obtained from those 18 flips. So that is our sample proportion already. And then the final piece of the question says to use a Z value of 33 on 20. So that is going to be our Z value, 33 on 20. So to be able to do this question, we need to remember the formula for the confidence interval. And so luckily for us, this appears on the formula sheet that you get for both exams. For the exam one, where you have to do it without a CAS calculator, but also on the CAS, CAS calculator exam. So this is going to help us to guide our work. So what we're actually looking at here, we need to find the upper, the lower value, and we need to find the upper value. And the only difference between these two is that this one has a minus here, and this one has a plus here. So for efficiency's sake, let's just simplify one side until we find out what this value is here and then add it or subtract it from our p hat value. So first of all, let's summarize what we've got from the question. So we know from the question that our sample size was 18 because it said flipped 18 times. We know that we've got six tails from those 18 flips. So our p hat is six out of 18, which is a third. And we've been told to use a Z value of 33 on 20, which looks like a weird value but obviously doing this by hand, something's going to cancel somewhere. So let's go ahead and substitute those values into our lower value for our confidence interval at the start and just throw a plus on the top. So what I'm talking about is doing this. So you can see here that I've got P hat, then I've got a plus minus that re represents the minus here and the plus here. Where the Z value is, I've replaced it with 33 on 20. And then I have the square root of, and now I'm going to just tidy this up a little bit here um, so that I don't have fractions sitting on fractions. So I'm going to take this here and I'm going to pull the divided by N, because the whole thing is divided by N, out to the front. So you can see I've done that here. And now when I substitute in, I have a one on N value, multiplied by a P hat value, multiplied by one minus P hat. And so all my fractions are all sitting together, multiplied together. So now we need to go through and simplify this where we can. So you can see that I've canceled the two with the 18 to make nine. And then I've got nine and three times three to make nine. So this actually makes nine squared. And the reason I've gone for nine squared and not 81 is that I'm eventually gonna square root what ends up under here. So while I am simplifying, I'm also looking for how do I write the numerator and the denominator as squares so that I can simplify it easily. 
So now I can go ahead and square root that one on nine to give me one on three, uh, to give me one on nine, sorry, square root the one on nine squared, and that gives you one on nine. And then we can just move this all down. Then, so we're up to here times one on nine, then we cancel where we can and we get a third plus or minus 11 on 60. So our confidence interval is a third minus 11 on 60 and a third plus 11 on 60. So to add or subtract fractions, they need to have the same denominator. So a third is the same as 20 on 60 and 20 on 60 minus 11 on 60. So 20 sixtieths minus 11 sixtieths is 9 sixtieths. And a third plus 11 on 60 is 31 on 60. So that's how you calculate um, confidence intervals by hand. My suggestion would be when you are doing it by hand, steer away from using this form here for your standard deviation because you'll end up with fractions divided by fractions. If you pull that one on n out the front, then all you've got is just straight multiplication of fractions and it's much simpler and you're less likely to make a mistake. Let's look at some other sorts of questions now. So this next question tells us that we have a 95% confidence interval and what the lower value and the upper value for that confidence interval were and ask us to determine the sample proportion so this is looking for p hat and then to determine the sample size so we're looking for n that we used in the calculation of this confidence interval so to do this we need to remember for our confidence interval where p hat sits relative to these two numbers so if we use a bit of a number line our p hat value sits right in the middle of our lower value for our confidence interval and our upper value for our confidence interval. And this distance in between the two, between the lower and the middle and the middle and the upper is our margin of error value, which is a combination of our K value or our Z value for the distribution as well as the standard deviation that we calculate using our p hat value. More on that in a minute. So if we're trying to determine the sample proportion, we know that p hat is halfway between these two values. So if p hat is halfway between those two values, and let, we'll just use this for a minute, so we've got minus our margin of error and plus our margin of error, then what we can do is add the lower value to the upper value and divide by two, that'll find the average which will give us p hat. And if you look at the algebra that happens here, you've got p hat plus p hat to give you two p hat, and then minus the margin of error plus the margin of error, they cancel each other out. So you've got two p hats divided by two, that gives you p hat. So to be able to work it out for our confidence interval that we have, we take the upper value, add it to, sorry, the lower value, add it to the upper value, divide it by two, and we get 0 0.55. So this question actually asks as part A to determine the sample proportion, but to do any further calculations with finding either the um, an estimate of the sample standard deviation, the proportion, the population standard deviation. So any calculation that asks you to find an estimate of the population standard deviation or that asks you to find the K value or asks you to find hidden away in this standard deviation the sample size, any of those calculations you need P hat to be able to do that. And the easiest way is to add these two together, divide by two to find p hat. So now let's go ahead and determine the sample size that was used. 
So our formula that contains the sample size is our standard deviation formula. And to use our standard deviation formula, there's our p hat that I told you that we needed to know. So the standard deviation formula is part of that margin of error. So the pieces of information that we need are that p hat is 0.05. We worked that out from part A. We also need to know the k value which the question tells us is a 95% confidence interval. So we know that our K value for a 95% confidence interval, or our Z value if you like, is 1.96. And so we can substitute those two values in, and then we just use either the upper value or the lower value to calculate our N value. So let me just move this down here. So you can see that I have substituted in, make it so you can see, you can see that I've substituted in for p hat 0.55 minus k as 1.96 and then for my standard deviation formula which is up on the formula sheet I've substituted in my values and then I've just solved it on my CAS calculator to solve for n. Now it tells me that n is equal to 199.955. That's our theoretical value. We can't have 199.95 things in our sample. So the size of the sample is actually 200 to achieve the value that we want. Now this is a complex formula to type into your CAS calculator. So we can do a little bit of algebraic manipulation on our margin of error formula and come up with a new value. So let me just put this here. So this is the new formula that has n equal to. The k value of course is the k from our margin of error. And the M in this formula stands for the margin of error, which is K times your standard deviation. So the way that you would put this into your CAS calculator looks like this. I don't know if you think it's more simple or not. You don't have to solve, but it does in fact give you the same answer. So the final sort of question I want to look at is about interpreting confidence intervals and using them to compare a different sample and see what that intimates about the underlying population that the sample comes from. So hopefully this will help to make a little bit more sense of that. So in a study of 100 people, they found that 75% of them liked the taste of coriander. So in the first study, got down here, first study, our sample proportion was 0.75. A later study calculated the 95% confidence interval for the proportion of people who liked coriander and found that it was 0.105 0.237 and this is where the question gives away that they, are, well, they want you to explain something explain why this confidence interval so the second case confidence interval suggests that the population that the first study was carried out on is different to the population that the later study was carried out on. So here we need to think about what the sample, what the confidence interval is telling us about the population that it was drawn from. So a confidence interval of 95% tells us that we would expect 95% of samples taken 
using this method here from this population, 95% of those samples should contain the population proportion, which would be P hat, uh, P. So you can see that these are really quite small values. And if we had them on a number line, so here's our number line for possible values for our population proportion. So it'll go from zero to one. From the second study, this is the interval that we got from our first sample. And this is the estimate from the first study. You can see that the estimate is nowhere near the values of the confidence interval. And a 95% confidence interval has quite large margin of error associated with it. And so if it was the same population, you would expect this yellow dot to be much, much closer, if not inside that confidence interval. So if this was an exam question, the sorts of things that you would be saying is that the sample proportion does not lie within the confidence interval, nor is it at all close to the confidence interval. Therefore, that would suggest that the first study was taken from a different population than the second study.